This is your daily dose of all things royal. Welcome back, my gorgeous, good-looking friends. Looking at the media today, it appears to me that Prince Harry is a man on the run. All the media surrounding Prince Harry at this moment is about how Meghan and Harry are living worlds apart, and they're going in separate professional directions, wink, wink. All of this that we're seeing here is pure deflection. Now, the vibe that I'm getting here is that things aren't working out for Harry in the way that he had expected, especially since he came over here on this so-called mission Harry, I don't believe, ever stopped working for the firm. I do believe that he was over here to, one, interfere with our 2020 election, in which he did, and then, two, to try and break our Constitution by being a part of this censorship industrial complex. I think now, being that there's a real threat that Donald Trump will get into office— He's trying to make his way back to the UK, leaving Meghan behind because we all know that this whole relationship is a sham and his image will be rehabilitated by the institution. We're already starting to see that some of the royal correspondents like Jenny Bond and Ryan Nika talk about how Harry's popularity plummeted in the past, but it's showing signs of progress of getting back there. Please give me a break. In any case... I want to share with you this article from Closer Magazine from the UK that gives me every indication that the groundwork is in progress and the seeds are being planted for what is inevitable, Harry's return to the UK. Not the most flattering picture of Meghan, but I guess they're going for the victim look here, as Meghan is a professional victim. Anyhow, this article is pretty insightful, in my opinion. Now, looking at this article, I don't think Megan is the one that put this out. I somehow feel that this is Harry's team putting this out. And I believe that Harry is not coming back to the United States. And I believe, in my opinion, based off of this article, is that Harry is in the United Kingdom right now. Because of all that is going on with the election, as well as him being named in the Diddy lawsuit, as well as many other things that are now coming out as a result of being exposed for trying to interfere with our government, I don't think Harry is going to be coming back here anytime soon. And what I do believe that we're going to see more of are these artificially generated photos and videos of Harry popping up here and there and everywhere with some random kids that have been computerized. That's just my opinion. But I don't think that he's going to be back here in the United States, especially if the election doesn't go the way that they want, which, God willing, Trump gets into office then uh, we'll have some excuse for Harry and Meghan to officially separate, and then Harry is now doing his own thing. But anyhow, let's get into this article. You tell me who you think this came from. It begins. As the toxic feud with his family still rumbles on after almost five years, the past two weeks have seen a surprise upturn in popularity for Prince Harry after the estranged royal charmed his way through recent events in New York, London, and South Africa. But fans have been quick to point out that Harry, 40, has been leading a completely separate life from wife Meghan Markle as he embarks on more and more solo trips, with some raising questions as to whether all is well within their six-year marriage. Worlds apart. Among the comments posted online by royal watchers, one wrote, It won't be too long now. The phase where they start living separate lives have begun, while another added, nothing screams marital harmony quite like a series of separate plans and back-to-back solo tours across continents. Now, a source tells Closer, Meghan and Harry are worlds apart from where they were even a year ago and have become increasingly distanced due to the time they've spent apart. Understandably, spending large chunks of time apart creates distance in any relationship, and while they've tried hard to reconnect when they're together, the closeness and strong connection they always had is starting to be tested the more Harry's been away. It's no secret they've been living increasingly separate lives for some time now. Let's pause for a second. I do believe that these types of articles are now setting the stage for what is the inevitable, things that we've already known that have been going on. 
Harry and Meghan, have not been together for a while now. And I think now they're starting to ease this into the public to then make this transition to this full separation, ultimately this divorce. Now, while some of us believe that Harry and Meghan are struggling for money, I somehow don't think that that's the case. They have money coming to their foundation by various suspicious routes, as well as I believe that they're making money off of all these puff pieces that are put out there, in addition to the photos that they give to the media and all these stories that are being written. There is a return on investment in that. I also believe that if this is the path that they're going on for this divorce and separation, they're going to milk this for all it's worth. Believe you me, books, interviews, articles, you're going to see like first shots of Megan after divorce announcements. I mean, we know how these two love to saturate the media, and I will guarantee you that they are making money hand over fist on it. But anyway, let me continue. And while Harry, 40, has been jetting across the Atlantic solo... Megan's visit to a children's hospital in L.A. last week, during which she debuted a new look in a red dress that echoed back to her suits days prior to meeting Harry, marked her first public appearance since before Harry's 40th birthday on September 15th, which he spent hiking with friends. So then how was it that Harry was seen exiting Tyler Perry's birthday party, which we really didn't see his face to know if it was even him, and then also at this tennis charity? See right there, you know that there's some BS going on. Now the next paragraph I find really strange in how they worded it. It says, Close confidants of the couple have insisted that Megan, who shares Archie, five, and three-year-old Lilibet with Harry, had been the one to organize Harry's birthday surprise, which saw him spend the night alone. But their assurances that it is normal for couples to spend time apart have done nothing to dampen reports of difficulties. But whenever I hear that a certain person is sharing their this child and that child with, you know, ex-boyfriend John, it means that they've already been separated and they co-parent in the sense where they have a schedule to, you know, take care of the kids. So Monday through Thursday, Harry gets the kids. And then Friday through Sunday, Megan gets the kids. That is what I see when I hear the word share. Okay. The other thing that I found really strange here is them mentioning that Harry spent his birthday night alone, which then followed up with saying that, oh, that's not so unusual because they're used to doing it. Now I'm thinking to myself, turning 40 is a milestone. Why would Harry be spending the night alone? I mean, he could spend the night alone majority of the nights, but this is a special occasion. So again, this does lead me to believe that one, I mean, they're making this stuff up, obviously, but they're already separated. Because who really talks like this? People that are apart, right? Anyhow, Rocky Phase. Last month, reports suggested that the pair have been drifting apart for months, with sources saying that Meghan had been spending time away from their Montecito home while Harry had been spotted moping around at a local cafe. The couple are also said to be at loggerheads over their Christmas plans, with Harry reportedly wanting to spend the festive break in the UK after receiving an invitation from his uncle, Charles Spencer. While Meghan knows how well they've done to weather so many storms in just six years, it's understandably left her feeling panicked and anxious about their future. So this is a really strange article for me. On one hand, they're making Harry look like he's some poor victim where his wife doesn't give a shit about him. But then on the other hand, they're making Meghan look insecure and also fearful of losing this relationship. So maybe it's coming from both because this is the plan to exit out of this fake relationship. I believe more and more that, yes, this was entirely pure psyops for this censorship mission, but I don't think the royal family thought it would get so out of hand, in my opinion. I think that there was an understanding they would come over here for a year help influence to get Biden elected into office, and then they would go back. That's why the Queen gave them this year Rumspringer. But because Meghan went rogue and didn't want to listen to anybody, that's when things started to collapse. She thought she'd been on the plan of being okay with them being called racist. No, I believe that they were in on the plan that Harry and Meghan sold them about 
reshaping social media and making it a kinder world without inciting hatred and violence with this Sussex squad. I think that was all Megan. And once she pulled Harry away, that's when the deep state came in and seized Harry as their so-called asset and have used him as such. As you can see, the havoc that both of them have wreaked onto the Commonwealth countries, as well as the United States, weaponizing race in order to incite hatred online. So now let's talk about this pressure that Meghan is facing. And while Meghan faces pressure to build her lifestyle brand, American Riviera Orchard, (laughs) I don't know about you, but I don't see a big demand for her stinky little jam, but... If they say so, after her Netflix cookery show was hit with delays over copyright issues, Harry is also battling another potential backlash as his explosive 2023 memoir, Spare, hits bookshelves in paperback later this month. Ah, so Harry's paperback is coming later this month. What is the royal family doing this month that they can overshadow? Let's think about this. I don't think anybody will be surprised if this loser releases this paperback around the time that William does Earthshot on November 6th. I guarantee we'll get a leak somewhere in some foreign country to where it's translated to reveal something scandalous that is most likely 100% false. This is what they do, folks. This is what they do. But getting back here, it says they both dealt with a huge amount of pressure on top of personal trauma and family drama, which hasn't made the situation any easier, the source says. The past few months in particular have been extremely stressful, and naturally, that stress has had a knock-on effect on their marriage, which is causing their relationship to struggle. Oh, so now all their drama that they've unleashed themselves now is boomeranging back onto them? Oh, Kel surprise. What did you think was going to happen? Anyway, following their departure from life as working royals in 2020, the explosive truth bombs and damaging accusations they leveled at the royals throughout their Oprah interview, Netflix documentary, and Harry's Tell All gained them a legion of Hollywood pals, including the likes of Oprah Winfrey, Gwyneth Paltrow, and Cameron Diaz. But with the royals experiencing one of their worst years yet, with both King Charles and Catherine Middleton being diagnosed with cancer, the tide of public opinion has turned against the Sussexes, ultimately leading the A-lists to keep their distance too. You see, folks, how these two like to gaslight the public? They know they lied, but they're going to continue and double down that they were giving truth bombs and everything that they were saying was true. We know that they were flat out lies, but they know that if they continue to keep telling these lies over and over and getting these publications to keep repeating it, that at some point the public will concede. Well, you know, it's not working out so well for them, and I don't think that their popularity is going to turn anytime soon. And this is why Harry and Meghan are working so hard to shut voices like mine down. They don't want anybody challenging their truth bombs, which are lies. They don't want anybody challenging the narratives so they can get away with the criminal things that they've been doing by inciting people online in this psychological warfare, which is illegal, Harry. They don't want anyone to discover the corruption that they're a part of, and that's why our voices need to be silenced. Like, she didn't like that people were talking about how stupid and insulting this idea was to write on these bananas for the sex workers. I mean, in addition to this ridiculous moon bump that she is, like, sporting around, this is why she had to quell the voices. So now finishing off this article, it says, And now, with Harry spending increasing amounts of time back in the U.K., The source says he is feeling increasingly torn over his rift with his family and the life he has left behind and the new home he and Meghan have carved out with their children in Montecito. The source says Harry's far more distant and subdued, which he's blamed on his family woes. But it's clear to many that he's battling with a lot of confusion and unrest as he struggles to settle in California, which he's taking out on Meghan, even subconsciously. They didn't expect married life to always be rainbows, but it's clear that if things continue like this, there could be a struggle. So what do you guys think? 
I really can't figure out the game that they're playing because the articles that are coming out are so contradictory of one another. Like one minute, Harry and Meghan are so in love. The next minute, Harry and Meghan are separated, but the separation is a professional separation. Then the next minute, it's like Meghan is a bully. Like, where is all of this going? I think right now what needs to be focused on, and maybe this is all about deflection and distracting people, but it's really focusing on Congress, the U.S. Congress, to focus on Harry and Meghan and their involvement here in trying to violate our rights. And that's the thing that is really driving me to continue to keep talking about it. We've now discovered that this whole thing has been a sham. Everything about Meghan that she has told the world has been a lie. We've established that. The one thing that I can say after all this time studying and watching them and finally understanding what has been happening to us in this military-grade censorship operation that Harry and Meghan have unleashed onto innocent people? Anything that these two put out there or anything in the media about this couple, know that it simply isn't true or it's simply not real. Because all of this has been designed to do a couple things. It's designed to influence people to think a certain way. It's also to compel and motivate people, as well as, in some cases, used to deflect and distract from something else that's going on. And I truly believe right now, things are starting to catch up with both Harry and Meghan. And I believe that Harry doesn't want to be in the United States to face the music. Now, the last thing that I want to share before I go is that four years ago, the Hunter Biden laptop story was censored. And many say that had they known about this laptop and the dirtiness, as well as the lies that we were fed by the current sitting president, most likely would not have voted the way that they did. Now, I really hope that Harry is listening to this part. The people that Harry and Meghan chose to get in bed with, work with, align with, like the Aspen Institute and all these media outlets that push the lie that the Hunter Biden laptop story was Russian disinformation are the ones that controlled what information that we were allowed to see. So when we look at what Harry and Meghan are trying to do in bringing back the control, this is what we're talking about. They want to be able to do this legally. And in this situation, many of us see how this country right now has gone to shit as a result of these assholes who decided to hold back information and suppress it. This is why I am determined to continue to keep harping on this because we need to be louder about it. We really do. I want to see these two held accountable because of what they have done here that affected this country in such a way. So when Harry finally gets exposed, because the day is going to come, and I hope he's listening, I am not going to stop until people are aware of what Prince Harry has done as a guest in our country hopefully by our government in front of Congress, we'll finally get to see this come out. And I believe that this is the only way to stop these two from what they are doing. Yeah, you know, what do you guys think? You know, am I making sense? I mean, definitely leave your thoughts below. As always, I will be back with more content. But until then, please be safe and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Such a broad. <laughs>